Are you thinking of switching your super investment to cash or term deposits? This is a question many people consider during times of market uncertainty. However, making this decision without much thought could put your whole retirement plan at risk. In this video, we're going to go through the thought process you should be taking in determining whether or not you should be converting your super investments into cash. We'll explore different scenarios when you might consider moving to cash and the risks involved. I'm Chris Strano, Managing Partner of Toro Wealth, where we specialise in providing retirement planning advice for 50 to 70 year olds. I'm also the founder of superguy.com.au. If you're new here, make sure that you click that subscribe button. Also, check out my free six step super check, which contains more helpful super related tips. I've put a link to this in the description below. As always, this video is general advice only and does not constitute personal financial advice, so please read the disclaimer below. To clarify, this video isn't about withdrawing your money from super. Instead, it's focused on whether you should be shifting your super investments into a cash or term deposit option, as opposed to remaining invested in other options your super fund offers, like the balanced option, uh, the growth option, or shares or property. And while this is a valid consideration, many people tend to ask this question at the wrong time, or perhaps shouldn't be asking it at all. This video isn't tied to any specific event or moment in time. Rather, it's about the thought process that you should adopt when evaluating investment strategies, approaches, and philosophies. So if you find yourself wondering, should I convert my super to cash? Rest assured, you're not alone. I can promise you that this question has been asked by plenty of people before at various times, but the answer will always be the same which we'll come to in a moment. So there are three common scenarios where people consider switching to cash. These are number one, before a market correction. The market has been going up and up and up and a correction seems inevitable. Number two, during early stages of a market event. An event occurs that looks like it could have a major impact on the market, like the 2001 tech wreck, uh, the GFC, or the early stages of the COVID-19 epidemic. Maybe the market has fallen by 5 to 10% and you're concerned that it might fall further. So you wonder if you should switch to cash. And number three, after a market crash. You've experienced the full effects of a market crash when your portfolio has already fallen by 30 to 40% and you're concerned that you're going to lose all your money so you want to salvage what's left. Let's delve into each scenario to assess whether switching to cash would be a wise decision. Number one, before a market correction. Now there is some merit in switching to cash when the market is due for a correction. However, the market could continue rising for another two or three years and you might miss out on further gains. Also, what's your re-entry plan? This is something that many people don't consider. Number two, during early stages of a market event. There's also merit in this approach too, copying a bit of a loss to avoid a potential disaster. But what if you overanalyze the situation and the markets just continue up and up on their merry way? Now what do you do? Number three, after a market crash. This is the most disastrous option, waiting until your balance has dropped 30 to 40% and then switching to cash. If you have a well diversified portfolio with quality assets, you've probably already copped the worst of it. So selling now is usually a horrible decision. In each of these scenarios, Careful consideration and a pre-thought out plan are essential before deciding to switch to cash. In addition to this, if you are seriously considering switching your super to cash, it's important to ask yourself two key questions. Number one, what is my re-entry plan? If you have no answer to this question, you risk paralysis by analysis, overanalyzing when to reinvest, constantly finding reasons not to, and ultimately missing out on the market recovery and being stuck on the sidelines. Emotions can run high during a crash. It's essential to have an exit and re-entry plan prior to executing a strategy. The second question to ask is, what if I guessed wrong? What will you do if the market doesn't correct or fall and instead continues upwards indefinitely? Will you remain invested in cash for the next 30 to 40 years? How would you feel about having to buy back in at prices 10% higher because you got it wrong. Have a contingency plan in place ahead of time so that emotions don't take over if things don't go as expected. Another thing to understand is market movements. Each market doesn't always move in unison. While global markets are more correlated due to globalization, a 40% crash in the Australian share market doesn't necessarily mean your super balance will drop by 40%. 
unless all of your super is invested in Australian shares, which is unlikely. For example, a typical balance fund might have 25% in Australian shares, 25% in international shares, maybe 10 to 15% in property, and the rest in cash and fixed interest. This portfolio might only fall by around 20% during a share market crash. An even more conservative portfolio with only say 20 to 30% invested in shares might only fall by 10%. Establishing a long-term diversified investment strategy is usually better than trying to guess market movements. Most professional fund managers who spend every day predicting market movements struggle to do it. So why should you be any different? Do you really want to risk your retirement outcome on a hunch? I only say this because I've seen dozens of people make poor decisions with their super savings only to live with regret for the rest of their lives. Not to mention, they have to face their spouse or partner who may not have been involved in the family finances and now stuck in a less than ideal retirement because their spouse decided to play stockbroker for a few months. I know this sounds harsh, but I've witnessed it happen far too often and it's simply not worth the risk. Sure, you might have guessed right and added another $50,000 to your super balance, making you feel like a hero, but you also need to consider what happens if you guess wrong. If you're adamant about selling your super investments and allocating them to cash, then here's a strategy that you should consider. You might consider dollar cost averaging out and then back in. For example, you could sell one sixth of your super portfolio each month for the next six months into cash, then wait say 12 months and then reinvest one sixth of the balance back into your portfolio each month over six months. Now the timeframes of this strategy can be as long or as short as you like, but this can significantly reduce market timing risk, which is basically the risk of making the decision to buy or sell your portfolio at the wrong time. And while I don't completely disagree with making tactical changes to a portfolio, I do believe more in long-term outlooks and aiming for steady average returns. Investing can be as simple or as complex as you like. Personally, I prefer to keep things simple. It's effective, predictable, reduces stress and saves time. In fact, I haven't changed the asset allocation of my super in over 15 years, and I consider myself reasonably knowledgeable about investment markets. So rather than constantly making tactical changes to your portfolio or deciding whether to sell off your entire portfolio into cash or term deposits every few months, why not figure out what average long-term return you need to meet your retirement goals? Make sure you're comfortable with the associated level of risk and then choose the investment option to meet your goals. Let's look at the five main investment options offered by most super funds in Australia and what the potential returns are. Each super fund might have slightly different names and slightly different allocations, but let's keep things really basic for now. So the main five options you might choose from is the conservative option, the moderate option, the balanced, growth, or high growth. And to give you an idea, though these aren't exact numbers, over a period of 10 years, a conservative portfolio might earn around 4% per year, a moderate portfolio 5%, a balanced portfolio 6%, a growth portfolio 7% and a high growth portfolio 8% per year. And while these figures might not be precise, the overall concept is, and the general rule is that portfolios with higher exposure to property and shares like growth portfolios typically offer higher returns over the long term compared to more conservative options. However, a growth portfolio will also experience larger fluctuations, meaning that your super balance may drop more during a market crash and rise more during strong economic conditions. The risk level of each investment option reflects the likelihood the portfolio won't meet its expected return in the short term, but still has a reasonable chance of achieving it over the long term. It's crucial to understand that these portfolios will likely continue to generate similar average long-term returns as they have done in the past. Despite wars, recessions, terrorist attacks, GFCs, overrated Olympic breakdances, and other global events. These significant events are typically just blips in the context of long-term investment markets. So rather than stressing over market timing, focus on identifying the investment return needed to achieve your retirement goals. Choose the right investment option to reach those goals and then set and forget it. This approach allows you to enjoy life without risking your retirement on gut instincts or something you read online that maybe got your heart fluttering and turned you into a Warren Buffett wannabe. For example, if your goal is to retire at age 64 with an income of $60,000 per year, plus a $10,000 holiday annually, and you determine that you need an average return of 5% per year to achieve that, 
then why not place your super in a moderate option, as an example, and relax? Almost any professional in the financial or funds management industry will tell you that this set and forget investment approach is far better than trying to outsmart, outsmart the market by timing its movements. And think about it, if your ultimate goal is to retire at a certain age so, so that you can spend more time with family and friends, enjoy hobbies, travel and so on, do you really want to gamble with everything you've worked for over the past 30 years? In reality, such a gamble is more likely to jeopardize your retirement dreams than improve them. Anyway, that's just my view. If you got value from this video, please hit the like button and make sure you subscribe for more videos on superannuation and retirement planning. If you need help with your retirement plans, our financial planning firm Toro Wealth helps 50 to 70 year olds optimize their financial position in the lead up to retirement and feel confident about retirement. Go to torowealth.com.au to find out more.